now as we come out for our second map of this evening, which is going to be Clubhouse. Yeah, we've seen quite a lot of Clubhouse recently, and it's good that you mentioned the whole kind of momentum-based gameplay, because if you had to define Latin America in just a short phrase like that, I would say that is basically how you would do it. Maverick Band there coming out. Maverick Band isn't something that's so unusual. You do kind of expect it on uh, on Clubhouse. He can be very powerful in any sort of CCTV or cash take. And uh, and the Glass Band there. Glass seeing a 100% ban rate so far. In both today and yesterday, that is, actually. Yeah, definitely. I'd be surprised if we don't see a Mirror Band coming through here. And there we go. Nip. Sorry, Liquid Argon about the Mirror. That's... um. That's also a bit of a target band as well, because we do see Julio play a decent amount of mirror and does it very, very well. Yeah, we didn't didn't get to see any mirror play last time on border either, because it was banned out there. Going to be looking at an echo ban coming out for the final one, so Maestro will again be available. Yeah, definitely very good indeed. Let's see how it does go down as we move into round number one. It's going to be Team Liquid, who start on the attack here. Obviously, the... Uh, the colors are a little bit disorientating there, but they do start out on the attack here. So let's see how it does go down. As we move into round number one, we'll see a CCD room and cash room defense. Yeah, so like you say, it's going to be liquid out on the attack this time. Um, opting to take the double hard breach, not really too many surprises there. Nesk this time is Ash, is all his. He's free to pick Ash. He's free to pick the Ash. So, I think the Ash Band would have been a bit of a waste uh, coming through from Ninja's pajamas, but you know we'll see how it does good out. As we will see a CTV Cash Room defense coming out to start with here. How do you think this is going to go down? This is a pretty bomb. typical defense when the Maverick is banned, and I think that's why they've gone for to start with. But we've already seen some pretty well coordinated attacks coming out from Liquid. I'd like to have seen a set of grenades. I think on the, on the side of Liquid. I think a set of grenades there would have really been able to make opening that wall a little bit easier. We did see it quite a lot of times um, yesterday where the grenades were able to just push the bandit off, being able to trick that CCTV cache wall. Have jackal from below, or you know you could use the twitch drone if they're going to be pre-placed. But there's not a lot of scope there to deal with, um, you know, a, a bandit that's actively tricking. Um, so if Julio plays his card right, there's a good chance that he's going to be able to keep these attackers out for some time. Uh, but depending on how the uh, how they could use the utility, if they go for the old double hard breach option and they just place one charge on either wall, you know, uh, he'll be able to make short work of that. Yeah, he should be able to do so indeed. Let's move through into round number one and see exactly how it's going to go down. I like these Maestro cans coming out from uh, Pino here, and we'll see how that does work out for him. But uh, we're going to move through quickly into round number one. Liquid have not have dropped a map the entire qualifier. I think this is very, very close for them dropping it. But Gohan, the, the Twitch is getting away with the same things again. And as I said before, sometimes from Liquid, it has come down to them just being very, very smart with it. But that was just poor paying attention coming out from Nip. They know that Liquid do this. Yeah, Gohan's really getting away with murder on that Twitch. You can see there Julio is now trained onto that drone hole. He isn't going to let the same thing happen again. But he's already lost two charges, so there are only two to deal with now. Maybe this is the time for Ness to try and make his way in downstairs. He uses Ash Breach Charge to deal with that. Ooh, that's going to be a big pick there for the evil eye there. Just taking out one of the drones, denying a lot of information there for whoever is playing up on a garage catwalk. But Gohan, again, he's just going to rotate his Twitch drone all the way around, get it into cash, and he's already got one of the bandit batches off. That's going to be all he needs. The wall is going to be open within the first half of this round. Not only did he get the, the drone, and just, oh my god, Ness just runs in. He's just a monster. Stacey Kate takes down Kamikaze, and all of a sudden it's a 2v4. Julio is going to try and deal with it a little bit back, but Wang going to be playing on the east stairs and seeing what he can do here. But flashbangs go out. Ness picks up a third kill, and it's all down to Wang, but he can't find anything. Stacey Kate picks him up, and Liquid, in a very stunning fashion, take round number one. For Liquid, that was all about taking that east wall, and Gohan was pretty much... He was key to that, because as I was going to say, not only does he get the bandit charges with the Twitch drone, he also knows where the bandit is, so he can say, just open the wall, he's not even there, he's not even tricking. Liquid are confer well, continuing their fine form that they've been having on attack from border, continuing it into the map that we are currently on, which is Clubhouse. Um, I have no idea how Liquid are getting away with what they're getting away with at this point. It seems as though Nip are just made, I don't know if they're maybe panicking a little bit and just not really playing themselves, but 
you just don't see Twitch drones getting away with that much. And you can see Gohan there is looking for a six pick and he is going to make it onto the Twitch from the book. I'd maybe like to have seen a book for downstairs. I think, I think, they, I think okay. they think there's going to be upstairs again coming out from Nip. It's, typically they will do that. It's a good choice from Nip to switch it up straight away because it really didn't work for them there. As soon as that East yeah. Wall got open, Ness just runs in and gets two kills and makes it a third. So I think it's a good idea to switch things up and go downstairs. But the lineup of Liquid, it's pretty flexible and I'm sure that they're going to be able to deal with this. They've even got the Jackal if they do need to hunt out any roams. Yeah, but again, roamers aren't really that big of a deal on Clubhouse generally, but especially downstairs, very, very hard to roam here, even with the latest changes to the map that did come through from old Clubhouse. So maybe maybe you can go with a bit of a roam game here. If you see a roam game here, it normally is in strip. So I'll be surprised if Kamikaze actually does anything here, because I'm pretty sure he's the only person with impacts here. So he needs to be playing safe below Kitchen, unless the smoke has impacts, but we don't quite know. Yeah, looking for the uh, the old impact trick onto the kitchen hatch, but I mean, at this, I think we've even got a jackal ping. Well, jackal will certainly get a ping pretty much straight away anyway, purely because of you know catching people that are maybe reinforcing the hatches and stuff. And it just gives you an idea as to who's playing on site. You can drone a little bit lighter upstairs as a result of that, uh, as you know that you're going to be pretty safe from uh, from areas like you mentioned, like strip. Uh, but uh, Parley's made his way all the way into escape tunnel already, and he's holding the hard angle onto the doorway. Everyone's pretty much aware of his presence at this point, so he doesn't need to peek anything. He's got some Legion Mines that he's going to have to deal with, no doubt. Um, but uh, th it's good control to have at this stage, and he can really just hold there and make a bit of a nuisance of himself because it's going to cut off a lot of rotation within the site for the defenders. Yeah, he is. The fact that he's found his way into dirt and no one is contesting this area is pretty, pretty powerful. It also sees that Nip don't really have too much control and they don't really have too much intel of what's actually going on in the areas they're supposed to be defending which isn't a great idea. He's actually got two ADSs down in blue here. This is a great position for Pino to play, but it might not matter that much. So Sex Cake is going to go down immediately, however, for a nice Nitro coming out from Psycho from below. That's already Habana off the board. That's a great kill. They know people are in dirt now. While I agree with one person being in dirt, just to cut off a bit of site rotation and hold an angle and be able to push him when things get crazy in the, in the site, I'm not sure about there being two players in dirt because I just feel like you're stacking up a little bit at that point and the push is going to be a little bit too light from everywhere else maybe, if there's only another two. But Kamikaze is going to take his eyes off the door. I really thought that we were going to see Zig there moving and making his way in, but he, uh, he just changed his mind at the last minute. Guman will go off. Kamikaze is going to be well aware now that he's going to get pressure from Dirt Ness, picking up a really important kill there onto Pino, and another one from Zig onto Kamikaze. Smoke grenades are going to come out, which is going to force the players in tunnel to push back. Time is working against them at this point as well. Wag is spamming his smoke grenades and he's going to come up in a, an engagement versus Ness. He's going to get away with his life. He's going to actually get the down, I think, onto Gohan as Wag now is well placed to get a couple of kills. He's going to get a nice one there onto Palu. Psycho picking up one of his own three versus two now. It was looking good for Liquid, but it's not looking very good anymore as Julio is going to pick up a quick double K to close out the round. Great place from Julio coming out right here at the end, especially with the way that he peeks it as he goes around and goes for the double kill. Really well played from Julio there at the end, but Liquid with a pretty good attack there, honestly, it just, in the end, just didn't work out for them. I think they just didn't have enough control and they were kind of all pushing in, but only from two sides. They didn't have Kitchen Hatch. And if you're gonna go for an armory push, you kind of want to get control of that hatch. It was the two players that were in dirt that were really, you know, sort of bugging me at that point because they just got cut down on the way into the site. Um, I'm not too sure what happened there because, like you say, there just wasn't all too much open um, from Liquid. It looked like they were very well placed at a point to get some kills and to close that round out, but ultimately when it came down to the trades, um, they just weren't really able to keep up with them all too well. Uh, we're going to see a blitz now on Sexy Cake, which is a little bit different to what we were maybe anticipating, but I'm pretty glad that Gohan's on the Thatcher this time because I feel like he's running his luck on the Twitch and being able to rely on him to get those Bandit batteries off. Yeah, he is relying on it quite well. We'll see how it does go through as we move into round number three. Team Liquid and Ninja's Pajamas all tied up here at one apiece, but don't forget, Team Liquid have a slight advantage here, and they do have a map up here. So we'll see Black Eyes are going to start to go down. Let's see what's actually going to happen here, but this is, uh, 
I'm not sure if I really like the attacker lineup here from Liquid because, as we said before, that Twitch was working out quite well. It is a bit of a crooks pick, so I'm glad that they've picked that uh, Thatcher coming out here now instead. I'm just really not sure about them not picking a Havana here because I feel like, as we mentioned multiple times before, having two hard boosters and flip house makes it so into the favor of attackers that isn't coming through from Liquid this round. I really like the Thatcher the Hibana and the Thermite for this side because I feel like if you're able to open up that east wall very early on and then make a rotate around to open up into construction as well, you're just really squeezing the attackers, uh, sorry, squeezing the defenders and making it very difficult for them to operate in the site with any surety. Um, but like you say, only having the one, it does put a little bit more pressure onto the Thermite, but there's no, re there's no real you know bad thing for that. They can just set up and make sure that they're able to get the job done. You can hear there, the exothermic charge is going to blow and I think that that's that is going to be the Freeze wall device. open. No, it's not. Julio actually managed to bandit trick that. He must have got that at the last possible second. So only one exothermic now left on the well in the Attackers hands of Zig, the and that's going to make things a little bit user. more crucial, um, you know, to get right this time for opening up this wall because he's only got one more shot at this. They have got the blitz that they're going to be able to play off if they do have to start pushing corridors and stuff and doorways, but it's really not something they want to be relying on. Yeah, it's going to be very interesting going through here, but. Uh... There's not really a lot of sightline here that Nip actually have decent control of. Like they have the garage control, they have decent intel actually, like a lot of cams going through here from Pino that can just whip between. But in terms of actual control, there's a lot that Liquid could push in here, like from below, that uh, that really just hasn't happened for ninjas. Like they don't actually have control of the downstairs area, they're not playing anyone down there. Liquid could go in there very, very easily, send Nest down there and, uh, and just push through that way. But it looks like they're going to go for a construction push instead. This could go better for them. I do like TexaK being on this construction push because they know that someone was roaming around here. And so you're just having that blister in 1v1 is just kind of horrible to deal with. Yeah, you know, Blitz is pretty much everybody's worst nightmare to be in a 1v1 with at this stage. Um, and especially with so many players left still alive. But as I say that, Nesk is going to pick up a nice kill there onto Kamikaze, taking Jaeger. And... Jaeger's just going to be playing inside at that point, so Nesk is going to have a nice little pick on that. It's possibly going to free up an angle looking in through the, uh, the sort of balcony window, Attack looking onto a site. Ooh, Howley there, just going to narrowly miss out on a kill onto the Maestro, but Sexy Cake is doing good work on the Blitz, taking out Wag Psycho, going to find that kill onto Gohan. And Palu there, just putting some, uh, putting some good shots in there onto Pino, but... Pino's managing to stay alive and he's just keeping himself very well hidden. Sexicate with another kill onto Julio. Psycho and Pino picking up one of their own. We're still on this battle with Paolo versus the Maestro at the top of the Armory Corridor. I'm not sure what's going to happen here. The plant surely has to start going down very soon and it is. But Pino is rooting out the rooting out the defenders and he's going to be able to pick up the kill in the final few seconds. What happened there for Liquid? They took so much control. It was just a battle between Paolo and Maestro on Catwalk and Paolo just lost. I think Liquid, again, are thinking they have more control than they actually do because they push in, they try and go for their execute, but their execute relies on just getting pick after pick after pick. They're not putting down smoke cover, but again, we kind of mention how smoke cover can act against you. Maybe that Liquid are thinking about that as well. They're thinking, we can't really smoke push here. We have to get kills on our entry. We can do that because we have Nesk and we have Sexy Kick and we have all these great fraggers on our team and we have the operators capable of doing that. It's all coming down to gunfights for Liquid here. Defenders, Sometimes they're just not winning. I'd, I'd really like to see what happened there in terms of... Was there a player that would have been able, an attacker that would have been able to play downstairs in the garage and look up from garage door onto catwalk and just try and pinch the maestro out a little bit harder? Because I think that that would have paid, a, you know, that would have paid dividends to them at that stage. Yeah, it definitely could have done. But it's going to be two one up to Ninjas of Pajamas. This is somewhat the score line we were expecting with the Maverick Bang coming through, but. Pretty well played from Nip so far, and I think Liquid are going back to their old strategy of bringing the Twitch. Although, this is going to be a gym bedroom defense. I'm not sure how I feel about this when you don't have a castle and there is no there is a Maverick, so you know there's no Maverick. Right? Yeah, I mean, 
it's a tricky one. I like the shield there. That's, you know, pretty standard shield to protect from the drone hole. Uh, Gohan is going to be on the Twitch again, so it's going to make his job that much more difficult to sneak his drone in and pick up those bandit batteries. I'd really like to have seen Gohan back on the Thatcher here, and I'm not sure why he's favouring Twitch at this point. I don't know if he's favouring the weapon or if he just feels like he can still get the job done with the Twitch drone. We're going to see the drone now coming up past all the barbed wire, which is going to be making a lot of noise. If he manages to get anything off here, I'm going to be pretty, pretty surprised. You can see the camera there just flashing. It's maybe going to get called out that he's actually there on his drone. Julio just placing his batteries down. Feels like it's safe at this time. But Gohan, he's out of his drone. He's on the repel. He's possibly lost it at that stage. Yeah, possibly lost it all here indeed. We're going to get through into round number four. Looking pretty even across the board. I, w I still don't think that Liquid's lineup is the greatest there. But again, ninjas, I'm not really a big fan of their setup here either. Banner tricking is not really something you can do here without having that um, that cast possible to do. see, again, the Twitch drone. Oh my god, how does this happen every time? He's, oh my, he, he, the Twitch drone isn't even getting shot, it's just hiding in the barbed wire. I thought that Julio had shot it. I think he managed to get rid of one of the extermin charges, but I think the wall is now going to be opened, and it is. Like, this is just... I can't believe what I'm seeing here. I'm not sure why. I Nip, think what it is... Start brought, bring a mute, you know? Well, I think Gohan's just the best Twitch player in the world. He's... And that is so rare to see Twitch use her utility so well. Psycho is actually going to peek out all the way Attackers from the rat spot and takes down Nesk easy as that. I think Powers is just a little bit lost to them. Yeah, I'm, I'm really not sure how Gohan's actually getting away with this. It's uh, it's pretty mind-boggling at this point, but the man advantage is sitting with Nip, so even though the wall is open, um, it does look pretty good for them to be able to take this round. We've lost Nesk, so that's a lot of fragging capability, but Palu is now able to operate pretty freely on these windows outside of gym and bedroom, purely because there is not a castle that has been played. Oh, he could be peaked from CCTV, but I'm not sure if anybody is playing over in that direction. The wall now into bathroom is going to get open. That's going to make it very uncomfortable for Julio, and I'm pretty sure that he's going to go for a run-out kill here. He doesn't manage to connect. Palu punishes him for it, but Psycho comes out with a run-out of his own and does actually manage to pick up the kill on two Palu. Smoke grenades are going to come out in the final 25 seconds now, and the push is certainly going to have to start happening now for Liquid if they do want to get this round on attack. Yeah, it is a 3v4 at the moment. Waggers, you no, know, he's not down. He's on one HP in a dream. He takes that dream and sends it. Sage the sexy kick, kills him. And a flurry of kills just coming through from Nip to deny the push coming down. Gohan goes down. And that's going to be Nip who take round at number four. Very well done from them. Absolutely beautiful round from Nip, but I can't help but feel there are so many mistakes that are coming out. Ninjas are doing really well to deny the last second push coming out from Liquid and are doing well to trade off of each other. But Liquid are doing so well to get this early control and get open these walls without really sacrificing any utility. The, it's just the it's the Twitch plays, man. It's like 200 IQ Twitch plays every single time. I've no idea how you keep a Twitch alive in barbed wire and still able, able to take it, Bandit Battery to, off. To be fair, it's, he is playing the Elite skin on Twitch and it can be a factor it's because a, the Elite skin is very hard to see the Twitch show. If you ever like drive your drone back to your spawn, you know, trying to save it, there's times where you can't even see that. Yeah. You can't see where your drone is. It's like a chameleon. Um, so yeah, there, there is a, there could be a little bit of an element of that going on there. Um, it's going to be a non-factor this time though, because Gohan is going to switch out onto the book. And you can see that there, there's a pretty good spread of kills there on the team of Nip and Nesk and Sexy Kick are doing all they can to uh, try and keep Liquid in this, but ultimately not enough kills going out on the bottom end of that leaderboard really to be picking up these rounds. Uh, scoreboard very reflective of that at this point. Liquid started out really strong. That first round that they had on CCTV, it came out like an absolute train and it really looked like they were going to be well set to storm through this map. But as the rounds have progressed, Five Nip just seems to, to be picking up round after round on defense. And this is just so contrary to what we saw yesterday, Attackers where we saw all those rounds won on attack. Yeah, it is definitely very good. I, and I think really the definition of that is the fact that the Maverick banners come through. And I know I say that kind of controversially because when we saw Clubhouse, no one was even bringing the Maverick, even though it was available. So yeah, that swings around about there, I guess. But I still think the Maverick banners are affecting quite a lot here. But it's not even that though, because Liquid are doing very well to get these walls open. It just seems to be the last second push just all goes wrong for them because they're relying too much on frags and they normally just don't have the manpower at that point. 
it's yeah, you, you, like you say, it's just all in the execution in those final few seconds, and that they are maybe relying on frags um, a little bit too much, and that's what's causing them a little bit of a problem later on. But you know, ultimately, they've just got to get their heads in the game now and start opening some hatches and opening some opening some lines of sight because they've got the book, so they're very well placed to start opening up lines of sight in kitchen. Try to get rid of that impact trick from happening. Try and get kitchen hatch open. Maybe even try and get church wall. And they just need to push on the site and execute, but that is not going to help them at all. Psycho being allowed as the Jaeger to just roam freely over in strip. Palu not able to get any footprints. I'm not sure how he's got away with that. That's going to be some pretty smart play in the prep phase. Great play to completely outmaneuver a jackal like that. That's no easy feat whatsoever. That's going to be a great early kill coming out there from Psycho. As we see round number five getting underway. Very now, what a shot from Gohan. Oh my god. Kamikaze just gets removed. What was that? Kamikaze playing very like, off site as well there. Nip seem to be going for a little bit more of a, a roam here and uh, maybe they're just stretching the legs a little bit and the, you know they're getting pretty confident at the minute they've got a couple of rounds in hand so they feel like they can get away with playing a little bit more aggressively uh, or a little bit more unpredictably but you know Kamikaze is going to get punished for it. It worked out for Psycho. He managed to take out the Jackal. Smokes, you know, a smoke loss that early on is pretty big because Jackal's ability, while it's very valuable on Clubhouse, I think you're really bringing him for the smokes at that stage because he's going to be able to allow that entry into site um, or just a little bit of covering fire but kitchen hatch is going to get opened with pretty much no problem at all there c4 toss comes out from pino but doesn't manage to connect liquid made his way to the bottom of the main stairs he's just going to be peeking on into armory uh, or arsenal sorry to see if there's anything that he can find in there wag conscious of the uh, of the tunnel push that could be from it coming out but i don't think anybody's going to be playing that yeah, not quite yet, but we're getting into the execute phase here, but Liquid again, not having too much control. I feel like they're just going to go for the push and just try and get into the side, but there we go, he goes in! How does Nesk do that? He's all the way in! He picks up the kill into Psycho, and this all starts to come through very well. A flurry of kills just come through, it's all down to Pino all of a sudden. He takes down one, but now the plan is going down. It's a 1v2 right now, Nesk is injured. Pino just tries to push around, but no, he can't get it. Sex Kick takes him down, and Team Liquid take round number five. And again, they just have no control, but they just don't care because Nest runs in, kills people, and so does Sexy Cake. How is this happening? I think, like you say, it comes down to quite a few mistakes. Nip were a little bit more... Well, they played that a lot more differently. Um, we had players, you know, we had Kamikaze playing upstairs. I believe it was in gym that he actually got shot out of. Um, and we also had the Jaeger playing over in Strip, which was a, you know... I think it was um, Pino able to pick up a kill, or Psycho able to pick up the kill uh, and move back through onto the site. So there was a couple of differences there in the way that Nick played that, and it really showed. But, you know, last time we went, um, you know, last time they went down there, they did defend it very well. So I'm not sure why they made too many changes. All I can think is that it's, they had a couple of rounds advantage. Um, but I think a fair reflection now would be for this to go 4-2 in favour of Nick because they really defended very well on this, uh, on this site. I just want to go back as well. Gohan potentially had one of the new, most ridiculous book headshots I've ever seen onto the Legion who could dare to contest the goal. As we'll see, Nip move into their final defense round here. We're going to see how it does go down to CCTV cash room. This has, been, um, this has been a bit back and forth so far because at the start it looked like Nip just could not hold on to this at all and Liquid just rolled in here and just completely destroyed them. This time, it's a little bit different because the next round that they saw on that defense, they just win quite well. And again, I feel like Liquid are just relying so much on that entry. I would like to see at this point, Gohan go below and then go into a construction push instead. The construction push didn't work too well for them last time, I think. Well, so, so what I'm saying about here is that they're relying on this quite well to try and get this wall open, but they're not bringing the Twitch yet. If the book goes into stock, they open up the floor there and they construction push and they open up that wall up, they have a great opportunity to push in because I don't think there's actually any impacts from ninjas to impact trick the construction wall. Yeah, I think they're definitely going to have to do something to deal with those bandit batteries and I think like you say, they, um, 
the book there is going to be the man to do the uh, to do the good work on that. They've got loads of ADSs there to try and avoid any grenades that may be looking to push uh, the bandit off his position to be able to trick. Does look like we're maybe going to see that. Book's doing a bit of drone work for himself downstairs, just making sure it's clear for him to go in and, uh, and get the wall open. I'm, I'm glad that we're not seeing the Twitch again because I'm not sure they can rely on that. I think at this point, Liquid have just relied a little bit too heavily on a, on a couple too many things, and I don't think they can keep you know relying on Nesk and Sexy Cake to go in and get those entry kills. Um, you know, Sexy Cake on the Hibana this time, so unlikely that he's going to be doing that, but certainly Nesk, um, they can't always be relying on that, and they need to just, you know, to remove the good individual play, that's that's always a great element that you can use. Um, but just focus on maybe this this execute and zig there. Just trying to bait out the second set of bandit batteries, as I believe the first ones have already been destroyed. And uh, there we go, we've got the holes underneath from Buck. That nicely placed yeah, frag grenade threw, there. Yeah, he threw a nade up and that was really well placed from him. Julio still, he's very, very wary about wanting to contest this right now. And I really don't blame him, there we go. He's not going to be able to do that. That is pretty good for Liquid. Most teams will get that open by about 1 minute 40. That's not exactly great maneuverability, but without a Capitao, I'd say that's okay. Although yesterday we saw teams getting the open insanely early without a Capitao, so... Yeah, I think we saw like 50 seconds, didn't we? It was yeah. it was crazy, but there were, there were times where there was no mute or, or bandit being brought, so it did make things a little bit a little bit strange and a little bit out of the out of the ordinary. But sexy cake going and uh, pushing through onto uh, onto bedroom, looking onto construction, uh, just looking to find an angle in. Pino going to be playing his spot on top of uh, garage catwalk. Two kills going to come out very quickly there for Liquid. That's the entry that they need. This is going to put them in a big advantage in these final 30 or so seconds to get this round and to take this to 3-3. Nesk is going to pick up another one. Julio going to get one of his own, but Paolo picks up one onto Julio. All now down to Pino. Shots are going to come in, but he's not going to manage to connect. Everybody is well aware of where he is at this point. As the Maestro, he's definitely got this clutch factor. He's got the LMG. He's got the ammo to do the job. Zig's going to peek out. That's going to be all she wrote. Liquid are going to take that round. And we're going to be moving out of our first phase three apiece for both these teams. That's actually pretty good for Liquid, considering how to, either to one side or the other this map tends to be and to even it out when you start to move through onto your defense that's looking pretty good i would say though that liquid's executes were so weird all the way through that it kind of just felt like nesk and sex kate just got sent in and it was kind of just like when you're gunfights that's all you have to do just shoot them forehead but it doesn't really work out that well normally i'm very interested to see what's going to happen here as we move through onto Nip's attacks. And I like this lineup coming out from Nip. I very much like the uh, the Vigil. I very much like the Vigil. The Vigil. Um, uh, that's, I think that's a, a good switch and robot. Yeah, we're seeing, uh, we're seeing a, you know, a typical sort of lineup as to what you would expect over on the side of Nip. Um, do like the shield being brought out as well. If the shield is able to effectively push down Dirt Tunnel, there are no lesions on the side of Liquid to make that a treacherous path. Um, depending on how quickly Dirt Tunnel gets open and if anybody's playing in it from the side of Liquid, you could expect Wag to make pretty good progress down there um, and really provide a nice angle of, uh, of attack onto, onto this Armoury defence. Arsenal defence, sorry. Yeah, definitely. So, let's move through into round number seven and see exactly how it is going to go down and what Liquid want to do here for the defence. I'm kind of surprised that Zig is playing so aggressively here right now, considering he is the bandit. Attackers recovered the diffuser. Attackers yeah, he needs to be careful with that if he's got pre-play stuff. Um, you know, that's he not, that's not really too bad. He has all four shot on him right now. But uh, yeah, if he's got him in his back pocket, it, there's, there's not really, he's not really got much business to be out there uh, being all too aggressive. He can get his barbed wire down, but he wants to get himself back to side. There's nothing really on the side of Nip that they're going to be able to deal with it in terms of a Twitch or a Thatcher. They're going to be looking more for grenades. They're going to be looking more for, um, you know, actually just being able to shoot them off from certain angles. They've got two sets of hard breaches, so you know they've got they've got a chance of getting something open. Uh, but if Zig deploys his utility in the right way, he could really slow this push down. Yeah, he could really slow this push down. But we're getting into round number seven. So slowly but surely, I'm really surprised at how slowly Nip are moving right now. They're droning everything out. They're trying to get control of the Romas here. Oh my god, Julia with a great wall bang there. Takes down Gohan. Already the Viggle off the board, as you mentioned. 
Big shame there because there's a lot of potential for a vigil. Um, you know, even just seeing the scanner on your drone, it can really make attackers think twice about pushing in certain areas um, and it can really waste a lot of time. Nesk looks like he could be playing up here for free right now. I'm not sure if that drone is aware of his presence. Psycho does seem to be moving relatively slowly though. The Monty's going to push in. I think that Pino had already done the good work. Oh, sorry, Psycho had already done the good work there and Pino's going to steal that kill off him. Um, but that's the roam has gone. It's, it's an example of why roaming on Clubhouse is so difficult because the rotates back down to site are usually held by the attackers at the point where you're trying to rotate onto them. Um, so it can make can make life very difficult. It's not looking too good for Liquid now as, uh, as they are, you know, they've lost two men already. Cycle, they're going to get reset as well. Um, so moving into the last minute, Nip a very well placed to take this round, but it's going to be all about how they're able to execute this final minute. Yeah, it's going to be interesting indeed. Just about one minute left to go on the clock. And Zig has actually made his way down onto the church wall. He's going to be able to bandit it all out. There isn't any Thatcher coming up from Nip, but they do have a book. And they do have nades from that same book. So they should be able to do some work here. But see, Nip still moving very, very, very slowly. And thank God there's impacts on the smoke, because I thought this was going to be completely over. They can still impact the kitchen hatch as having wasted so much time, but there's no reason to eat that. Zig is going to go down to Julio. And Patrick's are going to come out from Sex to Kick. And it's going to deny the kitchen hatch coming through. 30 seconds left to go on the clock, but Liquid are in a 5v2. This isn't looking too good for them. Wag makes his way all the way into the site, and they just can't deal with him right now. He's just running circles around them. Nitro's come out, sorry, Nade's come out. And we'll see Wag is just going to try it on an ADS. Try and get his kill, but there we go. He does! Beautiful! Sexy Kid goes down. It's now all down to Palu in a 1v4. He's on the roam. All he has to do is deny the plant. He will try and drop down Moto, it seems. The plant is going down, but no, Pino doesn't let him drop. He takes him down, and Nip take round over 7. A great attack from them. Very poor position coming out from Liquid. Just really, really, uh, you know, strange decisions coming out to play two people upstairs. Well, I don't, I don't mind playing two people upstairs because you saw that ninjas took two minutes to clear all those people out and start to work their way onto the site. So I don't mind it. My big issue is the fact that Zig peeked onto Moto when he had absolutely zero reason to peek that hatch. He's gonna lose that gunfight. And when he loses that, you lose a Nitro, you lose a body on site, and now don't you have to do with this Montaigne. And I think that if he hadn't done that, Liquid could have taken that round still. Yeah, I really like Nesk now switching over and bringing the Legion. That's going to make Monty's life a little bit more difficult on the push-in. Got Pali there just baiting out a six-pick onto Jaeger, uh, even though he's already on Jaeger, so just making sure that he's, uh, he's using all of his options just double checking that he actually does really want Jaeger, but I think we, we should see a little bit more of a conservative liquid this time. We've got the Maestro uh, and we've got the Legion, like I say, so they're going to want to keep themselves a little bit closer to sight, maybe. No Valkyrie coming out, so it's going to deny them a little bit of information, but what they lack in that, they're going to be able to make up with in terms of denial and the evil eyes, which are going to provide, you know, another two sets of eyes, if you will, um, that, can be, uh, that can be oh so useful in those final few seconds. So. Liquid, they need to adapt, they need to, you know, they need to change up the way that they were doing these things. Let's see where Palu starts to play at the uh, at the start of this round and if he tries to keep himself sneaked, you know, sneaked away over into uh, into strip. Attackers have recovered their defuse. Yeah, we'll see exactly Attackers what he wants to do here. It's gonna be round number eight getting underway as Liquid are gonna be on yet another defense in downstairs. And yeah, you are right. He plays a little bit more conservatively. The thing that I really like though about their aggressive strategy is that they had a smoke with impacts. And that is so key if you're going to waste time to be one minute down and to have to deal with impact tricking at the same time then as well when you already just wasted a huge amount of time going for roam clear. That is so hard to deal with and I really wish that more teams would do it when they played a roam game on the clubhouse. Liquid had everything against them but uh, they will lose that round. We'll see, as you said, a bit more conservative liquid coming through from them. We'll see how that works out. They still seem to want to go for that impact trick though on the kitchen hatch, but I think that you just don't even have to push that. There's two pushes they can really do here with the Montaigne. They can either push dirt and open up the kitchen hatch and push uh, Arsenal like that, or they can just push church and do the same take they did last time. I think they're going to do the same take they did last time though, just thinking about how they position their drones and what kind of uh, take they've gone for already. 
can have Ness there playing on main stairs, just getting harassed by the bug from up above. He's able to put down a goo mine, and uh, I think that's going to stick. So the goo mines are going to start coming out. Wag there is going to uh, is going to try and move away, just make sure he's not going to get peaked as he removes that goo mine. Julio going to open up dirt tunnel, and that's just going to provide a little bit of a distraction for the remaining defenders on the site. Uh, just another angle for them to be conscious of. But the Monty is going to be pushing down main stairs now. I think there's another goo mine going to be at his feet, and he's going to tread very carefully because he doesn't really want to overexpose himself all too much to that. Evil Eye there waiting, uh, laying in wait for anyone that does decide to drop Kitchen Hatch, if that does actually get opened. Nesk's still able to stick some green lines out, and he is going to manage to bandit trick that hatch yet again. So that's just going to deny all so much a line of sight, you know, option for entry. It's really going to slow the attack down at this stage. Yeah, it is going to slow the attack down indeed. Nesk is on very low HP, and what a great knee comes out from Psycho. That takes down Zig, and ninjas are starting to get the control that they desperately need, but they need to be in a better position, and they need to start moving much, much quicker. Nades are going to start to come out. You can see that Sexy Gate still playing around the dirt tunnel. This isn't great positioning from him. Liquid need to start moving back onto the site. Needs to recognize where the push is coming down from. It's going to be Palu playing around blue, but oh my god, Wag is just going to get so lit up from the Maestro Cam there in Moto. He can't push against that. He has to get someone over here to destroy it. There's 20 seconds left. Julio can't deal with it. He needs to push all the way in. And this is just not looking good at all. And there's still Legion Mines on the board. Thankfully, TV Julio hits into that. But Wag goes down to the smoke nade from Sexy Cake. And this is looking so good now for Liquid. As Paolo picks up a double kill. There we go. Kamikaze does shut down Nesk. However, now it's 2v3. Not looking too good for Nip. However, it's all down to Kamikaze. But no, he can't find a kill. Sexy Cake finds a triple kill that round. And Liquid take round of A. Very, very well played from them much better on the conservative play. I think that, that Maestro camp was the saving grace though. Shotgun OP again. The, uh, yeah, the, the, the Maestro Cam, definitely. It's very difficult as a shield in that position. He had the Legion Mine in his foot, the Goo Mine. He's not able to do anything with that. He's got to take that out because that's just going to keep ticking damage away. Exposes himself to the evil eye, can't shoot it. You know, it really came in clutch, and that's what I really wanted to see there from Liquid, is a much more conservative round, everyone making full use of the utility, and not really leaving anything to chance. They were just letting the attackers play into their hands and into their plan, and it did really, really work for them. And it's more it's more akin to the Liquid that we saw in Border, um, who did play, you know, did the play their defensive rounds relatively well. Well, we will see a CCTV room and cash room defense coming out now from Liquid. And we'll see exactly how that's going to work out for them. This um, this lineup is very interesting coming out from them, though. The fact that they're still bringing the bandit here, but there's no Thatcher from Ninjas. I don't know if that was a good read from Liquid, or this is just their strategy. Because I, I feel like it is their strategy, because otherwise they wouldn't have brought smoke here, if you know what I mean. So. Sexy Kick has been traditionally playing the smoke pretty much every single defense round for Liquid. Either that or he's been playing the view. Him playing the bandit is a very off pick for them, and I feel like that's part of their strategy since he is playing it, and he's playing with the Nitro as well. Yeah, Sexy Kick's been doing really good work with the uh, with the SMGs on. I mean, he's been using Doc B, he's also used, uh, like you say, smoke and mute. So he's obviously an absolute beast with those uh, sort of small caliber machine pistols. So yeah, to see him switch off is a little bit strange. I'm sure, we've got a good idea of why they're going to do that. And again, Gohan's been doing very good work as well. So it's tricky. They're going to have to do something about keeping all the downstairs control because as soon as that book's allowed to play underneath. Uh, on Psycho, if, if he gets underneath and he's able to open up the floor, the wall is going to get opened relatively quickly. And we always see that as soon as the wall gets open, it just gets really difficult for the defenders that are on site to actually operate with any surety in the site. Yeah, definitely. But we'll see Ninja's Pajamas start their attack. This Monty has been both effective and ineffective so far. We've seen one win and one loss with this Monty. It's definitely looking very interesting, I would say, that ninjas are still trying to play around the Montaigne. I'm not really sure what to expect here, because I do like the Montaigne pick normally, but... I don't know, I feel like Liquid should be expecting this by now, because it's been a Montaigne every single round. I'm kind of surprised they've not been bringing uh, the Legion here. That was a whiff nade coming out there from uh, Psycho from below. 
It is a shame that the, the Legion wasn't brought this time. They did bring the Legion last round, and I think it's certainly attributed to them winning that round because they didn't bring it in their first round, and the Monty was allowed just to take too much control and to push in too far. Uh, if you remember, it was the combination of the Goo Mine and the Evil Eye that you know led to them winning the last round. So Ness going to open things up with a nice kill onto Psycho. That's going to remove Buck. So that's going to remove a little bit of the ability for Nip to be able to take these Bandit batteries off. Sophia is playing downstairs and operating relatively freely down there, just peeking out onto garage catwalk just seeing if she can find herself a kill but not going to be so going to make her way outside um, just you know trying not to lose her life to that we've got hibana opening the hatch up in stock and it looks as though we're going to be going for more of a construction push from uh, through bedroom on into construction and through the site that way yeah is round number nine looking pretty good i would say for liquid considering they've already got psycho off the board and they still have that east wall close it's all going to be about this construction push that comes through from ninjas and see how that works out. But don't forget, there's no Legion on the board. So this could be a decent Montaigne push coming out from WAG. It's going to be all about how this is played around. There is still two Nitros on the board as well. So Skate also has a Nitro, and I think this is going to be pretty key as we get into the late round. But there goes Gohan. That's a beautiful pick, but Sexy Kate takes down Pino in response. And then, oh my god, oh, this Monty runs all the way in. White oh, goes down. What a shot from Zig with the knife. As there you go, it's a 1v4. All down to Kamikaze now. It's all down to him in a 1v4 clutch situation, but he can't find anything. Ness takes him down from the top of East Stairs and Liquid take round number nine. I think that was really badly played from Ninjas right at the end there because they sent Wagon just as like a one man army. I don't know what was going on there with him, but fortunately, Zig will win out against him and Liquid move to 5 4. Sexy Cake did a really good job of redeploying his utility then, and as soon as they recognized that the push was coming from the other side, the bandit batteries were lifted or he maybe still had two in his pocket, I'm not sure. Um, but he was able to d put bandits on the seat on, on the cash wall through into construction, and that really, really played a really crucial role at that point, purely because if Hibana had been allowed to open that wall, it would have probably gone a lot differently. But again, like you say, Wag just getting so unlucky as the Monty um, and allowing himself to kind of, I think he did like a 360 at some point and he ended up with his back to the Valk and got knifed. A little bit strange, but, Defenders you know, can't take anything away from Liquid. They've got themselves in a good position now. They've managed to chain a couple of defensive rounds together. And historically, we did see a couple of, you know, more defensive rounds being chained together the first time that we saw the uh, the defensive phase on this map with, uh, with of course, Nip. So I don't know if it's going to uh, flow in their favor. Now they're going to be going up to Jim can be a little bit difficult we've got not, not not seeing a castle we're seeing the vigil again which really didn't work the first time that we saw it a couple of rounds ago yeah so i really don't agree the lack of a castle here especially if you're gonna play the bandit playing the bandit here means you're probably gonna want a bandit trick either over on jacuzzi wall or you're gonna try and bandit trick it in cash but if you're gonna do that i would like to see um, the top of the wall from Cash in the server the being opened up so they can impact the trick. But I feel like neither team has really, the only thing they've been able to ban a trick successfully is the kitchen hatch, but that's quite an easy one to do. I feel like they just haven't been doing any other ones though. But no, they are going to be open to the top of the server. It does allow you to be able to, you know, play there a little bit better. Um, especially if you can if you can keep them at bay with the impact tricks as well as the drone as well as drones and twitch drones and stuff like that as well it can make your job a lot easier they've got the um sorry they've got the thatcher this time and that's probably going to enable them to be able to open the wall a lot quicker it's, it's one of the reasons i really enjoy seeing thatchers used is because i feel like you just get things open a lot quicker than you know dealing with them in uh, you know maybe maybe seen as like less effective ways you can see there the ads just catching a couple of lifelines on the way in as another thatch grenade comes out but it isn't actually going to get anything he's maybe even going to get a charge there but pino is going to do some good work from jim window and pick up sexy kick there as he is trying desperately to get that bandit trick off and uh, i think the wall will shortly be being open and that's really why i don't like the lack of a castle there i can see what they were doing they had the shield there and they had the bandit on it but that bandit got destroyed by the thatcher and on top of that, Pino gets the kill anyway, both onto him and onto Paolo as well now. And if you actually repel on that gym window, you can actually see over that shield. So it doesn't actually protect you at all from bandit tricking. And I just, I, I hate that. I hate that setup. It's just not looking good at all. And it's, well, it looks like the ninjas of pajamas are going to start to push through as Time that is opening up. More thermite charges do go down. Now ninjas do have quite a lot of control here. It looks like they're going to push all the way into the bathroom as well. 
moving into the final minute or so of the round now and like you say it is looking very good for nip at this point they've got quite a lot of control zig's gonna get a little bit aggressive on this hatch in logistics just trying to make something happen what he's gonna have to nip back into is evil eye just to make sure that the plant isn't going down as i'm sure julio is gonna look to get that diffuser down as soon as he can nesk just he's, nesk's pretty stuck at the minute with that shield i'm not sure that i like the placement of that all too much great kill there from zig coming out onto psycho doesn't quite manage to get the kill onto the Monty as Kamikaze picks one up onto Nesk as well. It's all down to Gohan now. Gohan's actually going to be playing downstairs as Rook, so this retake is going to be very, very difficult for him at this stage. He's going to make a lot of noise on the way up. He's going to be very, very slow. And I think that we've got Wag very kindly playing on the stairs for him just to provide that sort of steel wall, um, which is going to be very difficult for him to get past. He's definitely going to get peaked here. The peaker doesn't manage to land the shots. Gohan picks up a kill, but Wag... 200 QI plays dropping the shield and taking out Gohan round on the board there for Nip. This is some great Monty play coming out from Ninjas, but Liquid are not reacting to it very well. They should have picked up at least by now, by round number 11, that there's a shield every single round coming out from Nip, and it's pretty key to their attack so far. Hopefully Liquid are picking up on this and they are going to bring more Legion. And there we go, Nesk is going to pick up the Legion here. I just... I'm very frustrated here, but... Also, I feel really bad for Zig there at the end, because what are you going to do against Wag when he's doing things like that? When the Monty pushes back, he drops his shield, he goes for the hit fire, and then he puts the shield again up. Before you can even react to him doing that, you're just going to get pushed down completely. Zig just can't win that fight at that point. No, it does put him in a very difficult situation. Need the uh, the lineup that we're seeing, however, from Liquid is is their their winning lineup, if you will, for this uh, this bomb site location of Arsenal and Church. This is the uh, when they, they did lose their first defence there, uh, but they did they did roam a little bit too heavily. So the second time they toned it back a little bit, brought the Legion, brought the Maestro, and those two elements were very crucial in them winning that round. So let's see if they can do it again. We are of course all tied up at five five. You can see the scoreboard there. Uh, 10 kills apiece coming out for Nesk and Sexy Cake and uh, Psycho on Nip. Got, uh, he, he's sat on 9, he's looking pretty uh, pretty pretty, but 9, 7 and 9, so uh, you know, doing some good work, but uh, also getting a couple of deaths there as well. But that's to be expected. To More than a couple, I would say. Well, 9. <laughs> nine. Yeah, exactly. So, we're going to move through into round number 11, which has been a very, very close series. It's been weird how many close games we've seen so far on Clubhouse. Not only during these uh, end of the qualifiers though, but while I've been casting the close qualifiers previously as well. There's just been so many close games on Clubhouse, it's always come down to the wire. It's a very interesting map these days, and I think honestly we'll see an overtime here just with looking at how close these teams are. I really hope that Liquid do pick up a little bit more Legion, especially next round as well, because there's been a Monty every single round from Nip, and it's been so key to their attacks as I mentioned previously. Wag has been doing a great job on it, but also Nipper doing a great well, great job of playing around him. Like he's getting in there, he's acting as that armored drone, he's acting as that you know presence. As, you know he's just standing there, menacingly, and you can't do anything about him. The Monty is uh, it's something that you've definitely got to deal with. And I think last time Gohan and the Evil Eyes did a great job of that. Uh, managed to eat up, eat away a large portion of his health. Um, you can hear there now there's going to be an experiment charge going or a breaching charge sorry going off on stock. Um, so maybe that hatch wasn't actually reinforced, um, but that's now going to be open. It's going to allow a bit of a line of sight there for Pino. No doubt he's going to throw some grenades down there through that as well. Really nice evil eye placement there, but Psycho spotting that out as the ash. And that could have been pretty devastating if Julio had placed one of his two exothermics on that hatch and then got it shot off straight away. It's not very likely that he would have done. There's other things of more value that he wants to be opening, especially as the only hard breacher. But a nice little cheeky evil eye spot there nonetheless. But unfortunately, it didn't for, uh, unfortunately for Gohan, it didn't quite work this time. Pino's doing a full, you know, full renovation there and uh, he's really remodeling the site, which is good to see from Buck, uh, managing to get that done from upstairs. And that's going to make it a little bit more uncomfortable for the defenders remaining on site. Yeah, definitely. We're going to see one minute left to go on the clock and we're going to see a blue push this time coming out from Nip rather than a moto drop push, which ended pretty disastrously from the last time. And I think a lot of it did come down to the to the cam, the maestro cam that was there in Moto. But there we go, Psycho Giddy all the way in, does pick up the first kill of the round. Gohan goes down so early on, and this is looking very, very good for Nip. All of a sudden, 
Wag could jump through this rotate, but he would probably die if he did that. I think he knows, as he's going to be holding it down fairly well and just stopping that rotate being used at all. He tries to push through, and he's being outsmoked. That is really good from Wag. Yeah, Wag just getting rid of all that utility nice and early on. Still 20 or so seconds left on the clock, so those smokes are becoming, becoming increasing in value at this point. Uh, but Wag's just doing a great job of wasting a lot of time and causing a lot of distraction there, allowing his team to reposition and get ready for this final push. Psycho's been desperate for this kill for a couple of seconds now. Doesn't quite manage at that time. Wag does pick up a kill, and then Liquid reply with two of their own. Three versus three. Is the diffuser going to go down in time? Liquid, they're going to pick up yet another kill, and the plant is going down. Wag gets another down in the process. So it is now Sexy Cake and Zig. They're going to close it out. Zig's going to pick up those final two kills. He's going to get the kill onto Kamikaze Planting, but not before he gets the kill onto the Monty. Pretty close round there. That's going to take us on to match point for Liquid. And judging by previous form, if they go up to CCTV, they should be well placed to take this second map and the series. Yeah, they're definitely doing very, very well for themselves so far. But as I said, this is looking pretty close to the wire. And Liquid again. They're failing to deal with Wag on the shield, and he almost saved that round for them. Yeah, he, he just proves quite a nuisance, you know. It's difficult to deal with the Monty. I think the, the smokes that the, uh, that that Wag was baiting out were really important because although he was baiting them out, and yeah, he's getting rid of the utility for later on in the round, at the point that they were able to do that, they were well into the final minute, and the smokes were just doing the job and stopping that push and really delaying. And you could see that the plant was going down with pretty much one or two seconds left on the clock. So th the time that was wasted by Liquid there was really, really good in, in sort of stemming the flow of the push from Nip. Um, but like you say, there's got to be something that's, uh, that's, that's used to deal with it. I'm glad that we're seeing the Maestro. I'm glad that we're seeing the Legion. I'm really not too sure about the Valkyrie for this. Um, I'm not sure where that really plays into it. I'd maybe like to see the smoke again. Yeah, I would definitely like to see the smoke again coming out here. And, but I'm glad at least that we could have bring in the Legion here, um, because that was a great way to delay this push coming down. I just feel that Wag is doing so much work here, just getting into the site, and especially with that shield trick that he's been doing, where he lowers the shield, goes for the hit fire, puts it up again. That is so hard to deal with, especially on a map like Clubhouse, where it's very, very tight corners, and it's just impossible to deal with the Monty doing that. So it's been abused very well by Wag. But Liquid, I'm gonna go back up to CCTV. This, um, this is looking interesting. I really want to see Liquid just pull out the win here, just because they've been doing very, very well so far on their attacks. But Ninjas are definitely proving that they are not to be trifled with at all. And yeah, as I, I mean, I mentioned it multiple times already, but Wag has just done so much work already to tear Liquid's defense apart. This is a huge round for Liquid. If they win this, they're going to the Invitationals. That's the fact of the matter at this point. Now, that's not to say that uh, Nip aren't going to get their chance as well. If they do lose this round, they will go against Black Dragons and they will get a second chance in the lower bracket final that will be coming up right after this game. But ultimately, if you're sat on Liquid now, you've got to be thinking to yourselves, guys, we can make this really easy for ourselves. We just win this round. Let's just not peak anything. Let's make a really, really good defense of this. And I think they're doing that so far because Nip are obviously feeling the pressure as well. This push is coming out a lot slower than we usually than we've been accustomed to seeing so far. Um, Pino's not downstairs. He's upstairs opening hatches. It looks as though we're going to go for a bedroom construction push. So a little bit different. I think that Nip maybe want to sort of speed things up a little bit here because we don't want them to run out of time again because that's just going to play right into Liquid's hands. That is going to play right into Liquid's hands and constantly from Nip, they've been pushing about the last minute of the round and there's nothing wrong with that, but as I said, time is against you constantly on the attack and you really have to start moving against it. Nip have been very, very slow throughout all these attack rounds, but it has been brought in by the fact that they still still have the wag just pushing in he's getting the entry in and then the rest of them just pushing around him and they're doing very well to play around the shield it's going to be all about how quickly they can shut down wag it if they can shut him down at all because a lot of the rounds where he's gone down early have been successful attacks and there we go but julia is actually going to get open the construction wall already and the east walls opened up as well this is looking very very good for nip all of a sudden they have everything open that they need and they have a pick onto the site that's actually nitro down as well so that's going to help out the monty here a bit I'd really like to have seen the smoke played there because I think that that could have made a real a tough job for Wag getting in. Wag's just been allowed to walk far too far into the side there and gain too much control and he's already putting some pressure on Nesk and you know Nesk hasn't really got anywhere to go with this. As soon as he takes his eyes off, Wag's going to drop his shield and try and get some shots down. 
So then you can see there with the hip fire headshot onto Nesk, Wag is doing good work with the Monty. Four versus three now as Gohan picks one up of his own. And Kamikaze there just getting the kill onto a distracted Gohan as Wag is causing so much disruption within the site. Palu now is going to have to do something on the Maestro as the plan is going down. But Sexy K comes out with a clutch Nitro kill. Could this be it for Liquid? What is going to happen now? Wag is going to be playing on the cash stairs. The diffuser is in the hands of Julio Paolo. is going to pick up a kill onto Kamikaze. And the plant is going down. The defenders are going to win the round because Sexy Kate gets a kill onto the planter. That's it. Liquid are going to be going to Invitationals. What a great way to finish off that last round. Absolutely superbly well played from Liquid to play very well against Wag on the shield. I still don't think they really knew what he was doing there with the hip fire shots because there was a lot of times where he put the shield down and Liquid would immediately shoot at its head area, assuming that he was going to ADS, but he's not going to do that and he hasn't been doing that at all. So, kind of kind of weird, but yeah, there we go. Some, some pretty impressive kills coming out, especially from Sexy Cake, who's ended the series on, I think, around 30 kills, so just, just, just shy of 30 kills.